Hello everyone, this is what's here for you coming today with a encouraging word, a, a word to edify the body that the Lord is leading me to. So let me go ahead and tell you and we'll start, we'll start with prayer and then I'll start telling you. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for your words. Thank you for your encouragement. Thank you that we can chop down and cut out every disturbance of the enemy that is trying to discourage us or keep us down or make us doubt your mercy, Lord. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. You are in charge. You are Lord. You are God. To the glory of God, you are the highest of the high. Thank you, God. Help us to lead lives that give you glory, God. Bless this word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys. So I just have a, a quick um, encouraging word for you. Um, with some of the dreams that I get, um, it, it, it can lead to discouragement. And I know it's not just me. I'm so glad that God has sent me, you know, inspiration and prophecy that will help me to understand some of the things that I might encounter as far as hearing things in the spirit and, and you know, learning how to not waver in what I've heard um, and, and knowing how to test the spirit. So, it can be a process is what I'm going to say. It can be a real process. And I know the enemy tries to like, likes to try to use discouragement to make you think, oh, you're going to miss it. Oh, you're this, you're that. But I'm just here today to number one, tell you, yes, there are reasons why you need to be sober, why you need to be vigilant, why you need to be watchful, right? But I'm also here to encourage you to let you know that there is balance here. God is truly in love with you. He loves you so much. You are his child. He is watching over you. And, you know, even though the enemy may be present, even though these trials may come, they're here to make you stronger. They are here to help you stay with God, to abide in Christ, to build character, to, to um, cause you to bear fruit, to cause your character to grow, right? So I just want to encourage you today. So the first part is watch for solar and vigilant. There are reasons why we need to be vigilant. There are reasons like throughout the Bible that let us know that, hey, yeah, you may be saved, but that's just not the end of the road, right? You still need to abide in Christ. You still need to listen for God. You still need to walk in the light, walk in the spirit, right? So that the enemy doesn't come upon you and catch you like a thief, right? In the night. So it does catch you in the season like a thief in the night. The Lord, you don't want that type of coming of the Lord, right? right? You want to walk in the light so you know what's going on. You want to abide in Christ and continue on this journey so that you can fulfill the will of God. So I think sometimes we get so caught up and in one side, we forget the other. So this is just a video of encouragement for that. So it says, um, one of the ways that I try to keep myself encouraged is to remember certain key scriptures that help me have balance. So one on the watchful, sober, vigilant side that I try to remind myself is that, um, but if we discern ourselves, we should not be judged. In some translations, um, this is uh, 1 Corinthians eleven thirty one. 31. In some translations, it's if you judge yourself, you will not come under judgment, right? So you want to be in a state of always listening for the Holy Spirit, always listening for his call, always listening for his unction to warn you that you're off the path, that something has happened. You need to pay attention. You need to be sober. Don't allow yourself to get off track here right? So it's important that we are always listening in the spirit. We're human. We fall short of the mark, but that is no excuse for us to just allow us to keep going down, right? You fall short of the mark, you get up and you keep going. You, you, 
brush yourself off and you say, Lord, restore me. God, forgive me where I've fallen short. Forgive me where, you know, I have I've gone wrong. If you look through the book of Revelation and you're seeing these churches, all the churches, one of the consistent things that you see is repentance. Zealously repent, repent, have a heart of repentance, have a heart of turning away from evil, have a heart of, of going back to the path from whence you've strayed, right? So make sure your mind is in a state of letting the Holy Spirit judge you, letting God wash you, letting God cleanse you. And the only way that you can do that is to keep your eyes open, not only for the enemy, but for when the Holy Spirit is letting you know something that, hey, you've gotten off track. Okay, now I need you to go back. I need you to repent. I need you to come back to me, right? So it's just like teaching a baby to walk, right? Just because they fall down, doesn't mean the parent just up and walks away. No, the parent helps them up. He, they brush off their legs and then they step back away and keep calling the child to come to them. This is how we grow in faith. This is how we learn to walk out this walk abiding in Christ. Okay, so the next verse is, but stay awake at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place and to stand before the son of man. So we are going to face these times, right? These are times that we are living in. This is Christ speaking. And it says, you know, we need to be vigilant. We need to be sober. You know, we, we need to not close our eyes on this season and say, oh, people have been saying this. No, you are, you're becoming a scoffer right? Jesus was saying, watch ever since then. So we need to even more so watch now that we are actually in the last days of the last days, right? So it says, be, but stay awake at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all the things that are going to take place and to stand before the son of man, Luke 21 verse 36. Um, next one is Philippians 2 12. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now, not only as in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, right? You need to be in a state of, of fear of the Lord, right? You need to reverence God. You need to know that he is God alone. Beside him, there is no other, and you should treat him as such. You should come before his presence with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise, right? You should be thankful unto him and bless his name. We need to keep that reverent spirit to God. We need to be humble in ourselves and and pray and seek his face, turning from our wicked ways, right? We have to keep this mindset of, of fear and trembling, working out our own soul salvation. We don't need to fall asleep, right? Don't be a, a unwise virgin and not have oil in your lamp, right? You're not, you're not seeking to abide in Christ. So these are the things that help me stay watchful, vigilant, not afraid, right? The, the thing is to not mix this up with what the enemy tries to do. You know, it's the enemy when you're seeing condemnation, right? There's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. When you start seeing that condemning spirit, you can realize that, hey, this is not of God. It, it, the devil definitely has a tell. He, he's going to try to to accuse you. He's going to try to defame you. He's going to try to discourage you. And when you start feeling those feelings, you have to know that's not of God, right? Ask yourself when you're going through some stuff emotionally and, and you're in a state or, or you're feeling like you're falling short and then things are not working out when, and, and what's going to happen, you know, and you start doubting and wavering. No, 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 no. You have a thousand tails right there. Doubting and wavering is not of God. God, God, that's not him. Fear is not of God, right? He wants you to discern when the enemy is becoming active. And in those are tells of the enemy. That means you need to get in your quiet place. You need to encourage yourself. You need to pull that word out on and chew it, right? Look up promises. One thing I like to do, if I feel like I'm getting off track, um, as it's really one of the main things is grabbing my Bible and going and sitting outside 
and I'll just flip through and wherever the Lord is leading me to, I'll just read a little bit and chew a little bit, read a little bit and chew a little bit. So I'll just sit there and and get that scripture and then just toss it up to God. What does this mean, God? Like I'll say it, I'll repeat it a couple times. And, and ask him according to what I'm living, Lord, what does this have to do with me? Show me this, open my mind to this, God, help me to understand what this means to me, you know, and, and when I get like that, and I start going through some of his word, he just lights up, and he just opens up his word, and, and he really encourages me when I do that, so just remember, you have to Work out your own soul salvation with fear and trembling. This is not your mama's faith. This is not your mama's salvation. This is not grandma's salvation. This is you. When you stand before Christ, it will be you, right? So in other words, you need to sit before him and be quiet. You need to sit before him and talk to him about his word. You need to seek his face, right? And and have faith that he is God and that he loves you. Amen. All right. So these are the watchful, sober, vigilant, not to be mistaken for discouragement that the enemy brings, accusations, condemnations. Those are different. So another thing I like to to do is just balance myself, knowing that, hey, I have blessed assurance, right? God has it. It kind of sounds like insurance. I have blessed insurance right I know that God is for me he has hope and a future for me he has things planned out for me not just here on earth but also in heaven great riches and beautiful things right so I just love the the word and so uh, the other balancing factor you can do is just find scriptures that are the assurance right that you will be spared that he is going to take you you are a part of his bride so one of the scriptures that I love 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 you are guys already know (laughs) revelation 3 the church of philadelphia revelation 3 8 through 12 and um I know the work this is verse 8 I know the works I know your works behold I have set before you an open door which no one is able to shut I know that you have a but a but little power and yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name verse 9 behold I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say that they are Jews and are not but lie behold I will make them come and bow down before your feet and they will learn that I have loved you Verse 10, because you have kept my word about patient endurance, I have, I will keep you from the hour of trial that is coming on the whole world to try those who dwell on the earth. I am coming soon. Hold fast to what you have so that no one may seize your crown. The one who conquers, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. I just love that scripture. I pray, you know, to God that I am a church of Philadelphia and that's something that you can pray. I pray that I have the characteristics of the church of Philadelphia. You can ask God whatever you want to ask him for, right? You can encourage yourself by saying, Lord, let me look like this, right? Let me have that open door set before me that's open and no man can shut lord god let me walk through that door let me receive everything that's coming through that door let me take full advantage of this door that you are giving me lord god and then also you know um the part where it says you you have kept my word about patient endurance lord let me be a vessel who patiently endures Lord God, help me to overcome. Help me to be spared this hour of trial that's coming upon the whole world. Help me to not let anyone seize my crown, God. Lord, let me be the one who conquers. God, help me to be an overcomer, right? The Church of Philadelphia didn't have a lot of power. No, it says little power. It says, I know that you have, but little power and yet you have kept my word lord let me be a keeper 
of your word. Let me not deny your name, Lord God. When there's a time for your name to be stood up, Jesus, let me stand up for you. Lord God, let me be the one, right? So you can pray these things. They are blessed assurance. You can pray and not waver, right? When you pray, you should not waver because God, God doesn't want to give you, you shouldn't expect anything from God if you're constantly wavering back and forth. So one thing that you do is when you pray this, just know it and know that God has heard your voice. He is hearing you as you pray and know that this is you right walk by faith and not by sight have faith god will grant this to you um it's so funny because i always look for symbolism i was going to save this last to um talk to you guys about but um i'm always looking for symbolism around me because i know that god can speak through things that are around you he speaks through the birds sometimes i'm sitting there and like a bird will literally come really close to me and like just start peeping and talking at me and i'm like okay lord i love you i'll talk to him to the little bird or or anything and um it's just so funny the symbolism that god puts all around me um you know he's just so wonderful like that and um one of the symbolism that I always get and God is so amazing and faithful to me to show me this is that um sometimes I'll be just talking to the Lord and he'll I'll go to my refrigerator not thinking about it mind you he always does this when I'm not thinking about it I'll go to my refrigerator and open it up looking for some food or something and I'll see the Philadelphia cream cheese, you know, packet sitting right there. And I'm like, you love me. I love you too, Lord. Because it's like, it just reminds me the Philadelphia, you know, it's the church that was faithful. Like you are being faithful. You are being vigilant. You are being sober. Keep your mind sober. I'm not saying you get a pass. No, I'm saying that you are in the right mindset right now, right? You are that church of Philadelphia. Do you believe that? Do you receive that? Then walk in that. You are that church of Philadelphia. And that has been so dear to me. And I'm so glad he always does that. And he not only does it with the cream cheese, but he does it. My husband watches baseball all the time. And the Philadelphia whoever I don't know they're always on the screen and I'll just be just sitting there and I always happen to just look up and I'll see Philadelphia and I'll just be like God I love you thank you I needed that you know like just the little things he just symbolism numbers sometimes it'll be 714 and for me that's a very significant number because it's like 777 and just just to encourage me and lift me up that yes you are on the right path the end is coming the completion is coming the end of the race is coming stay encouraged do not let the enemy steal that crown let no one seize your crown right so this these are things that are assurance and you should read these to yourself remind yourself of those things right lord help me to stay encouraged help me to not waver and doubt amen so that was Revelation 3, 8 through 12. Um, Jude 1, 24 says, Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy, right? So I just love that verse because, and you guys know that because you hear me pray it all the time, um, that he's able to present us faultless right? He is able on that great day when he comes and he cracks that sky, you know, and there's no more time to repent. There's no more time for anything, right? Yes, that's why he wants us to stay in repentance, have that zealous spirit to repent because when that day comes, you know, uh, it's like, like I had said in the other video, it's like a flash, right? It's like a flash bulb, like someone taking a picture right where you are, right where you are standing, right? If you got a big stain, then you got a big stain. If you got a big this or that, you got it. You know, it, it's once they take that picture and that's how God is going to come. He's going to come like a flash, right? And, and it's going to be, it is what it is, but God is able to present you faultless. Did you abide in him? 
did you stay with Christ? Then you can be presented blameless before his presence, the presence of his glory with great joy. Now, am I saying that everybody's going to be presented blameless who, you know, is not necessarily perfectly? That's not what I'm trying to say here. But I do know that the Bible says that blessed is he whose sins are not counted against him. So there is a state of being where as long as you're abiding in Christ, yes, we're all falling short of the mark, but God's grace is sufficient. Where sin abounds, grace does much more about we're not supposed to be trying to take advantage of that situation that's why he wants us to keep in a repentant state but we're always supposed to keep our eyes on the prize and trust in God without wavering knowing that to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy he is going to do that do you trust that he can do that that he can still present you blameless he watches he washes us with the washing of the word according to ephesians that means he's washing you he's in in the process of cleansing you he's in the process of transforming your mind making sure you're ready to present to his father just like a bride would be right you want to present your father this blemishless perfect beautiful bride right and and you don't want her to just have done it herself right have gotten herself as ready as possible right with esther then they take weeks and months almost like half a year just to be presentable to go into the presence of the king right they took baths and all these flowers and all this stuff and perfumes and and herbs and all these things just to be able to walk into the presence of the king. Do you want to try to be dependent on making yourself ready? Who does that? Who wants that? You don't want to do your makeup on your wedding day. <laughs> Nobody does, right? You want someone professional to come in and do it. You want the, the, the cleaners and everybody to have gotten everything perfect and ready. That's what Christ is telling us he's doing. He's making the arrangements. He is able to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy. He's happy to do it. He's joyful to do it. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling. Not only that, he's keeping you from stumbling. He doesn't want that dress to get ripped or messed up right? He's going to present you faultless on that great day. We don't know how everything is going to work out perfectly, but we know he's washing you with the washing of his word. We knew that he is, he is attending you. Christ is attending you. He is a keeper. Amen. And not only is he doing it, he's doing it with great joy. Trust and believe. Don't waver right? You can't expect God to give you anything if you're constantly wavering and constantly doubting. So trust that he is able. He is able, no matter what the enemy tries to whisper in your ear, he is able. When you start hearing those condemning words and condemning spirits, say it, he is able. He is able to do what? He is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy. That just encouraged me because it's like, sometimes you're like, oh yes, he can present me blameless, but what about my stumbling, right? I'm always the one falling short of the mark. No, he can prevent you from stumbling. It says now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory. These are two benefits, right? And present you blameless. Keep you from stumbling and present you blameless. Thank you, Lord God. Your benefits are greater than anything. They are greater than anything. That was Jude 124. So last verse that um, came to my mind is Hebrews 10 23 let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful that's just what we just said right I don't have all these uh, verses memorized not um, fully as far as like where they're located but I know 
that it says this in the Bible. That's how I, I start. I'll go and start typing and, you know, it'll show me where it's located. But I know that we should not waver. We should not doubt. We should hold fast to what he said. Hold it tightly in your hand. That's what I think of when I see hold fast. Like hold it to your chest and don't let anyone take it. Right? It says, let us hold fast the confession of our hope. What is hope? Hope is the preliminary step to faith. Right? And then once we have faith, we, we can make that belief in that substance to create the thing, to cause it to come into being. So one of the first steps is hope expectation that's what hope usually is hope is that expectation that something might happen let us hold fast to the, our confession of hope without wavering who is our hope jesus is our hope we can abide in him he is our hope let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering without going back and forth right for he who is promised who promised is faithful if he said that he would present us faultless present us blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy then he will do it if he said he would keep you from stumbling then he will do it he is faithful he who promised is faithful are you being faithful by trusting and putting your hope in him are you doing your part have faith don't waver hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful and that is hebrews 10 and 23 i hope this has been an encouragement to you to hold on to god hold on to christ and let's just go ahead and pray dear lord jesus thank you for the balance that you provide our lives lord god we know where sin abounds grace does much more abound We thank you that your grace is sufficient. You're having mercy on us. We put our hope in you and we hold fast without wavering to the the hope that you have given us. We know that you're coming for us. We know that your promises are true. There's no lies in you. We love you. You are the father of love and light and everything good, everything good comes from you we give you the glory the honor and the praise in jesus name we pray amen if there's anyone out there who would like to receive jesus as their savior and lord so they can experience these promises so they can begin to walk out this life just go ahead and pray this prayer with me dear lord jesus i ask you to come into my heart i make you my lord and savior Forgive me of my sins. Cover my sins with your blood. I believe you are the son of God. I believe that you died on the cross and you rose again on the third day. Forgive me, Lord Jesus. I have led myself for long enough. I'm asking you to come into my heart and lead me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And if there's anyone out there who would just like to rededicate your heart to Christ, just pray this prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I've gotten off the path. I have led myself astray. I have been led astray, Lord God. But either way, no matter how it happened, I'm ready to come back to you. Receive me back with open arms. Forgive me, Father forever turning against you lord jesus i repent of my sins and i turn back towards you lord god forgive me forgive me your word says you are faithful and just if we confess our sins you are faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness lord god created me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me lord bless me and help me to walk in your ways Walk on this narrow path, God, and keep going towards your end, Lord God. We give you all the glory, all the honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have received Jesus for the first time in your life and and you would like to just go ahead and begin to walk out this salvation, then, you know, all you have to do is just 
walk with the Holy Spirit. When you confess the Lord Jesus as your Savior and Lord, then the Holy Spirit comes into you and seals you into the day of redemption. He is going to keep you and no one can break that seal except Jesus himself when he comes back to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you into all truth. He will show you a church home you can go to. He'll show you other believers where you can go around and be sharpened. And he'll also show you where you can go and be baptized in Jesus' name. Go out and make disciples of all men. He is with you. You are a worker for the Lord. Remember, you don't have to work for salvation. Salvation has already been given to you when you confess the Lord Jesus. But the work portion gets you rewards in heaven. And when Jesus comes, he says, my reward is with me. So just be blessed. I hope you all are are having a wonderful day. Remember, Jesus is coming soon. So, and night is coming where no man can work. So do the works of the Lord while it is still day. Keep working for him. Keep loving on him and keep lifting him up. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you, his children, and give you, his children, his peace. Take care, you all. I'll see you next time or I'll see you in the clouds.